Hey guys, it's the Awesomeness505 here, and today I'm going to show you how to tune and tackle the Toge on Forza Motorsports 4. Okay, so some of you may be asking yourselves right now, what exactly is the toge? Well, the toge is a Japanese term which means mountain pass. Many drivers push their car's capabilities around these tight corners and see who can get around them the fastest. I believe I've created a video in the past which may elaborate on this term, which you can video click right here. However, this only goes through the virtual gaming perspective of the toge, not real life. Now that we've gotten that down, it's time to get a car that's willing to tackle these corners vigorously, but safely. Okay, so let's go to the car dealership and buy ourselves a Toge vehicle. The majority of these Toge vehicles are known as JDM, Japanese Domestic Market Vehicles, so you might want to keep an eye out for that when purchasing. Um, Bugatti Veyrons, no. Because these cars just have too much weight and horsepower that you'll end up spinning out somewhere near the middle of the toge. So here we are at the Mazda dealership. Now the Mazda dealership includes the RX-7s, the RX-8s, but I believe the best toge vehicles are the um, either generation of the Mazda Miata because they're real lightweight, they're real -wheel drive, and as you can see on the leaderboards, they pack some serious times. And now we get to the Nissan dealership. The Nissan dealership includes some Sylvias, the Datsuns, but as you go further down, it does include the Nissan Skylines, which can, which can be a bit tricky for B500 class because of their weight and horsepower, and probably fit the A600 better. Okay, now we get to the Toyota dealership. The Toyota dealership includes the generations of the MR2, the Toyota Supra, and the Celeca, and my personal favorite, the A86, and it includes the Altezza as well. All of these cars work decently well under the B500 category, however, for the same reasons as the Skyline, the Supra probably works best in the A600 rather than the B500. Okay, so now that we've gotten our car, we have to tune it properly so it drives well on the toge. Most toge drivers start off with racing slicks, racing transmission, and a race differential, and then add horsepower from there. Tire PSI should be medium low and equal, high final gear for acceleration, first few gears should be high, fifth and sixth should be low, tire alignment should be slightly negative to front and back, super front roll bars and rear wheel drive for understeer, e-brake during turn and if problem, soft suspension, ride height low but equal, damping don't bother, braking personal preference, differential low XL and D-cell. Tune's done and we're going to have to test this tune on the toge, the new downhill uh, section of the toge and see how it goes. Um, I'll be showcasing a replay that includes the driving line, throttle control, braking, all that stuff, all that telemetry that you'd find in the replay on the leaderboards. Um, this is just a disclaimer. Um, don't expect as fast times from the beginning. Like You can view this video as a guideline. Um, however, if you get slower times than what you expect at the start, um, don't feel discouraged. Every, we all suck at the beginning, and then we just kind of improve from there. Like, there's no way to fail unless you don't try, and you know, we all just kind of get faster from there, really. Okay, so it looks like I have a few Toge vehicles that I can choose from. And just for you guys, I'll choose a random car to tackle the toge and display the telemetry and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's choose a car for me to drive. Um, right. Okay, so we're going to use this car then.
stay slightly right of the yellow line and turn in. Break early and aim for the apex. Make sure your car exits in the middle of the road from the next corner. Make your breaking point the second arrow on the left side and turn in and aim for the apex. Stay inside for the rest of the corner. Make sure your car exits on the left side of the road and turn in and aim for the apex. Keep right of the yellow line and turn in, aiming for the apex. Keep right of the yellow line and turn in, aiming for the apex. Stay inside for the rest of the corner. Exit as close as you can to the yellow wall on your left. This is the infamous invisible walk corner, so take the usual inside outside line, but make sure there's some space between you and the inside wall. There are multiple ways of taking this corner, but I usually stay in. Follow through for the straight. Break once you hit the true shadow and turn in slightly afterwards. Aim for the apex, easy on the throttle, and when you exit, try to stay away from the outside guardrail. Take the outside inside line by aiming at the first apex, and then easy on the throttle through the corner as it's a double apex corner. Aim for the second apex by braking. Brake and turn in, staying inside for the next few corners. Break once you pass the big tree shadow and turn in name for the apex staying inside. Easy on the throttle with a corner. Stay inside through this corner. Stay outside for the next corner and break once you hit the tree shadow and turn in. Stay outside and turn in, aim for the apex. Break once you pass the big tree shadow and aim for the first apex, easy on the throttle, and accelerate once you pass the second apex. Break slightly early and stay in for this hairpin. Break once you pass this tree shadow and turn in, aiming for the apex, easy on the throttle. Try to keep away from the guardrails on your exit and move to the right side of the road and turn in for the next corner. Break once you pass the numbers in the road and turn in, pointing your car to the apex of the corner. Easy on the throttle and try to keep away from the outside guardrail. Take the outside inside line for the next corner and aim for the apex. Try to be as close as you can to the outside guardrail but not hitting it. Same outside inside line. Use the outside inside line for the next corner, and for the corner after that, just keep inside. Try to stay away from the outside guardrail. Keep straight, and stay away from the outside guardrail on your right. For the right left chicane, try to swerve around it. This turn may need some practice, as it did for me. Stay outside and turn in, aim for the apex. Stay away from the outside guardrail on your left. For the first hairpin break, once you pass the braking shadow, and turn in. If you find understeer when turning in, use the e-brake. I usually turn in on the middle of the road or the inside lane and e-brake during mid-corner if I find understeer. Turn in once you have the inside line of the next two hairpins and accelerate when your car is straight. Keep right. Break a few car lengths behind the braking shadow and turn in, aim for the apex. Use the outside inside line for the next left and stay on the left side of the road for the next corner and aim for the apex. Gently tap the throttle through the corner. Break slightly before the braking shadow and turn in, managing the throttle through the corner. For this technical section, break early and aim for the apexes for each corner. Feather the throttle through the exit. Break once you pass the grass barrier on your left. Turn in and aim for the first apex. Accelerate once your car is straight. 
brake once you pass the tree shadow on your right side and use the inside outside line. Accelerate once your car is straight and keep away from the guardrail on your right for the exit. Stay outside and turn in, aim for the apex. Keep left on the straight. Brake after you pass the bridge shadow and turn in, aim for the apex. Stay inside and use delicate throttle control for the final corner. And across the line. Yeah,